Hello? Hey, what's going on, Troy? How you doing, man? Good, RSF. How you doing, man? So uh, it's been a while since we talked. It was actually before the cycle, and fourth and forever kind of was more forever than it was fourth. So this is kind of our first <laughs> first time to really have like a, an AWFL, an awful uh, an awful chat show in a while. Um, yeah, but I appreciate you joining um, me. Of course, of course. It's been what a seat or two seasons now, two and a half seasons. Yeah, so. full user season plus the same year. So. So season three, we are we are in the thick of it. Um, we got some pretty exciting division races want to cover uh, today. Um, definitely some some new faces popping up as well. Um, yeah, I thought uh, we we could just go division by division since we do have like so many interesting races. We have some familiar faces and some and some new guys that are really showing us some stuff. Uh, so let's let's dive in AFC East. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts on this division? Felgar is obviously defending champ. Um, we got the Jets yep. at four and three, uh, Australian Bullfrog, who's who's really like shown some some good games, um, and we got not a Bumblebee at two and five, who has the most dominant rookie running back in the league, and then the Dolphins, I, I feel like have taken a step back. They really seemed uh, like a pretty pretty decent squad there in season one, and they've they haven't really uh, shown that improvement here in season three. Yeah, kind of a surprise. I was about to say from uh, the Dolphins because from what I had seen, I know they they had a tough first user season, but it looked like they they might have been one of those teams that was a draft away. Um, what I what I noticed though that stood out to me that two and five record for New England doesn't really reflect some of the games. You know, I think those games totally have been agree. a little bit closer. Um, Bumblebee is not a terrible user. He's just running into. I mean, he's he's getting maddened a little bit. I've uh, from what I've seen, obviously, uh, we have a, a lot of parity in the league, and that's a tough division to play in. But um, I mean, a few good drafts, and any of those teams could could jump up. I do think Felger's, from my experience, uh, obviously the strongest user in the AFC East. It's pretty clear. I mean, he's always been one of those guys. But um, that that Bills team is getting older or was getting older. And then I think Felger honestly had the best draft. He had um, a great draft. He had those first rounders stocked up right. from the uh, Stephen Gilmore trade. Yeah. And then, I mean, what, he got three offensive linemen, two offensive linemen. Anytime yeah, you can lock down the, the line. The Bills offensive line. They're pretty much exactly. set for the cycle at this point. Yeah. I mean, pretty, I, uh, I know I had my eyes on dominant. three or four of the guys that he ended up picking up. So, um, the Bills, I, I think the Bills will continue to, uh, you know, flex that dominance. That They're the new New England Patriots, or the, you know, what the New England Patriots were, kind of. Um, yeah, and, and more, but, more evidence that for people to think offensive line doesn't matter, but are willing, unwilling to trade their star offensive lineman, which means they don't really believe that. Uh, Bills drafted, what, three first and early second rounders, and they're – near the top of the league in, in yards per carry this year. So uh, Yeah, and that of... running back that they have, I mean, uh, Duke Johnson, you know, when he first came out, what, it, he was playing for the, the Browns. Brown. It didn't really look like it was going to be much. Um, I'm giving Tevin Coleman 30 carries a game just to keep pace with him, yeah. you know. So the offensive line is certainly the most important in my eyes. So moving on, and, and one, one last note on AFC East, I do think, uh, so Stranded recently lost, a, uh, dropped a game, and I do want to echo your thoughts on the, on the Patriots and the Jets both. Like, they, the Jets finally have the record that I felt like they were, they were playing at that level in Season 1. Um, you know, it's always a, a tough adjustment when someone new joins the league, um, different sliders than you see all, all the way around other leagues. But um, he's, got, he's definitely got some skill in his game. Uh, he's a little pass-happy, which... Um, can really bite you when you start playing the better users that are going to dare you to run. And if you can't stick right. to it, um, you're going to put up those 400 yard gains, but you're also going to throw four picks. And uh, one thing that's not really talked about that I think is kind of interesting, um, not to spend too much time on the AFC East here, but you have these young guys that draft um, franchise quarterbacks in the first round and they go and they start just unleashing hell in the passing game. And yeah, they're putting up 400. Sometimes you're even seeing the occasional 500 yard game. Um, from them, but they're throwing four picks. I mean, I'd be worried about regression. Like it's in a weird sort of way, right. this game does incentivize you to play a little bit safer with your quarterback the way it might 
in the NFL or else you might get hit with those. I mean, minus two deep accuracy, like that takes, that's like four or 5,000 XP to, to make that back up. Exactly. And it can happen from one interception, two interceptions too far out of the goal. I yes. mean, I've seen Ben Roethlisberger, I've had negative stuff. Granted, he's still, what, a 92, 93. Yep. Uh, but, you know, you have a three interception game and that, that feedback's coming back to you. Now, if you're throwing the ball 40 times a game, week in, week out, I don't do that, nor do any of the top users. Uh, and when we do, even, you know, a lot of us have we those interceptions. Breaks. I mean, the game against you and I, I passed how many times and had, what, six interceptions? Um, you can't win, that, can't win football games like that. Yeah, no, like you, you get forced into that sort of games from from time to time, but um, you know, you don't want to be coming out trying to get into that type of game. I just feel like that's a recipe for disaster. Um, so moving yeah. on, AFC West is next on the list. This might be might be the, the most interesting division. It's certainly one of the two or three most interesting. Um, Oakland back to the strong words. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, sorry. It's kind of typical for what we've seen out of the AFC West, isn't it? I mean, oh yeah, AFC West, uh, back to the AFC. close, close race. Every single one of those users is talented. You know, um, I've got I the mean, Chargers, Chargers up this four, week, but pe people forget they started two and zero. Oh. Like this is a team that the moment yeah. you start to sleep on them, um, you know, they upset a very strong Seattle team in week one or two. I forget. Uh, they they had they got real busy there for a week, so they're really probably only two and three in user games. Uh, with a tough schedule, like that Chargers team is number one, not out of the playoff race, and number two, like could do some nasty things in that division, playing spoiler. So, I mean, there's really not a weak user in that division. Not at all, not at all. And I, I had the pleasure of getting to see uh, the Raiders firsthand. Didn't really know much about Sage. I think he was one of the uh, hard at work guys later on in the cycle. Late, yeah, real late um, he joined. Yeah, yeah. Real late. Um, so I didn't know much about him, and seeing his defensive usering um, and what he was able to do on offense, uh, he is right up there. I mean, the Sim Super Bowl that he he was able to get um, personally has no asterisk next to it because he's one of those guys that can just see. play. I mean, Lions are a good defense. Um, you know, his Weapon X needs to work on his offense a little bit still, but um, he, he does play good defense and Sage. Right. Um, you know, it was, it was a defensive first half, but then Sage kind of found his groove and really did score some points on it. So um, that's that's part of the why we always will be playing the user games is because it just it takes that asterisk out when people actually get to see you play and um, right. you actually go out there and you're, you're not just waking up and told that you won a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, definitely. So Denver starts off 5-0, and and they're now 0-2. And, um, and I think they've thrown like eight or nine interceptions in their last two games, including, I want to say, a six-pick game with Cam Newton. I mean, is this kind of what I was talking about before, where you get a brand-new shiny toy and you just suddenly think that you have the right to throw it for 500 yards a game just because the, the number says yep. 99 by the name? Um, it sounds weird, but, like, I do think that you can get lulled into uh, your ratings, where you're like, ah, yeah. I have this, now I, I just get to do this now. Right, and is there really a shinier toy in the NFL or an awful than, than Cam Newton. I mean, yeah. if I got Cam Newton, I'd probably fall into the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw, you know, some fumbles and 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 our, our, uh, Otto running the ball with his quarterback a little more. Um, just because you have it doesn't necessarily mean that that's that's the right formula for winning. Um, has Cam Newton won a game yet in Denver? I think he's only played the one game and he threw a million interceptions. I, I think that. One of the things, and I, I personally would not want to bet against Otto. I think he's going to figure it out because he did look so strong in the first five games. And obviously he has a track record of being such a strong user, um, won the division um, in season one. But I, I think that it's, I believe in this league against almost any solid user, if somebody sits down and decides, I'm going to take the number one thing away from you, they will. Mm -hmm. And then you have to beat them with your second or third option. Like the best users can take the top two things away from you. but Anyone can go and just say, you're not going to beat me with a deep pass. Like, you're just not going to do that today. And then right. can you adjust or will you adjust? He definitely can adjust. But Yeah. And, I mean, if you've got all those weapons at your disposal, you have to use every single one of them. I mean, yeah. the, he's the field's a good big. I mean, he's a good runner. Like, he, it's not, and he's a willing runner. 
it's not so much that he only passes, it's that when he does pass with Cam right now anyway, I feel like he he definitely uh the first five games was was really taking what the defense gave him a lot better than I didn't get to see the game, so you know, I don't really know, but when I see that many interceptions, I'm just thinking that he's forcing it deep into soft coverages is is my guess. Yeah. Um and that kind of goes with with your stats that we talked or I mean that you posted in Discord. <laughs> Yards in the uh, air. Yeah, you start to see more passes downfield. You start to see more interceptions. Um, and in this game, I mean, like in any Madden, I think, but especially in this one, turnovers. Uh, turn. I think tur- turnovers correlate to losses. Honestly, I mean, obviously, we'll see. They absolutely do, a few and of they those didn't games. in Madden 16, and and they didn't in Madden 15. The few times that I like, I didn't have as much, con- you know, as much say in sliders at the time, but like. And I think here's why, because our sliders are so defensive, like the NFL, to where it's just, even the best teams cannot just drive 70 yards downfield on eight plays all the time. Like, you just can't. Like, the teams that yep. score a lot tend to score off turnovers and off big plays. Um, you'll, you'll put together a couple of drives if you're a good offensive team. But, even, you know, I don't, you point to a single team in this league, even the ones averaging 35 points a game, they're not just assembling five giant 80 play drives. Um, so to your point, like now turnovers is more important than ever. And yet people are turning the ball over more than ever because they're trying to get that third and 12 instead of just taking what the defense gives them, passing it for seven yards, trying to pick it up on the ground or it's second right. and 10 instead of running the ball or just getting that three to five yard completion, put it in third and manageable. They're trying to get 12 yards in second and 10, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or they're seeing right. a blitz and they're not calling an extra blocker. Um, so I don't, Which I don't, is important. Be, you know, That's different. so important in this one. Yes. You know, oh, you know, yeah. like, to go with what you said, I mean, what I've seen in a few, a few games, um, you know, it's second and 12. You know, let's say you ran the ball on first down, you get tackled for a two-yard loss. Second and 12 doesn't necessarily mean, oh, well, I need to get to the stick. Uh, a second down, you know, play where you get six yards, four yards even, making that third down shorter is important. I start to see a lot of people getting sacked, pressured. Uh, you know, if they're not getting sacked, they're throwing poor balls because of that pressure on second down. Uh, same thing with third down, obviously, but it's and it's just a, as predictable for the defense when it's third and long and they they know that you're going to try and you know pass the ball 15 yards down the field to get that first. Yeah, you look you know, at the take NFL what the defense and like give you third and ten, even third and nine and up, like but especially third and ten and up, they convert it such a low percentage of the time because the pass rush gets home, uh, blitzes are that much more effective. It takes a while for the receivers to really get into their routes and into their cuts. It, it is supposed mm-hmm. to be a really high percentage play, so I could not agree more with your point that when it's second and long, like take the three, even three yards is even it's second yep. and eleven. Like the difference between third and seven and third and ten. I'm sorry, but it's like night and day. Um, you yeah, I mean, as long as the other run. team doesn't have the ball, run the ball. It, yeah, <laughs> I mean, and you're not. Uh, this could be a, a whole different. A negative episode. play isn't always a bad play. This know? probably should be a whole different episode. So I'll say one last thing and I'll move us on. But like. Um, situational third down is big time too. I will, and look, I, I make mistakes on this as much as anybody, but like if I'm, you know, on say like the 32 yard line and I'm barely within field goal range and it's third and long and the odds of me getting a touchdown at this point are pretty slim. I'm not going to let myself get sacked for 10, 12 yards and force it or force it 15 yards downfield into an interception. I'll just, I've run the draw on third and 10, you know, barely inside field goal range get my five yards, not even that sometimes, kick the field goal, live to fight another day. Same thing when you're backed up to your side. Like, you know, <laughs> run a draw and punt. That's better than giving them seven points. Right. So Okay, so move, moving on, I do want to do predictions for, I think we're both on the same page about Buffalo's, it sounds like our, our prediction for the AFC East. Yeah, Buffalo's okay, so, the front runner. So AFC West, this is a lot tougher. We didn't really talk about the Chiefs and Dan, who is one – Three of their last four, I believe, and his offense is really mm-hmm. hitting its stride with his own second-year pro quarterback. Um, who's your prediction for the West? You know, I got to stay with Otto just because of what we've seen and with him missing the playoffs in the last user season, I believe, um, yeah. and then adding Cam Newton to the mix. I can't picture him losing it that way, especially with the AFC. Um, 
it's between Otto and Sage. I mean, it just goes down to those. I mean, the Raiders versus Broncos. Um, I think it's totally po- possible, though, to see all three of those teams, Chiefs, Raiders, Broncos, in the playoffs. Uh, that kind of, again, goes to what happens in the AFC South, though. You know? Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, so I'm all right. So number one, I don't see three teams from this division making it. Not that there there's three there's three or four caliber playoff caliber teams. I just think that they're going to beat up on each other so much that it's just yep. going to be tough to all three make it. I'm with you. I'm actually betting on Otto. I think he figures it out. I think he calm, comes back down to earth a little bit and learns to use Cam's amazing abilities rather than just force it. Um, I think he's motivated from season one where he missed it by just a hair. Um, I think. I think Dan. I think the three of them will finish either all three tied or within one game of each other. I think Dan's going to win a lot more games. I think Sage is going to win a lot more games. Um, but I'm I'm going with Auto for the division. We're going to zoom through that. yours a little bit because it's not as interesting a division at the moment, except for one thing. Um, first of all, the, we don't really know how Woody just got the game, so I'm going to gloss over him. He's literally going to be playing a lot of catch up. Um, and he's taking over a team that was 0-5 or 1-5. So before we get to you, like, honestly, there's not a whole lot to say about your team right now. You're going to win the division. You're going to run away with it. You can't say that, but that's going to yeah. happen this season. However, I do want to focus on the Browns and the Bengals because, number one, both of them have a shot at the playoffs still. Uh, Bengals have their work mm-hmm. cut out for them. Uh, Matt Track um, hasn't taken that step forward, but he also has really, really, really been hampered by injuries this season, probably worse than anybody in the league. Losing AJ Green, definitely the worst defensive. Yeah, so like, as if he can tread water before he, as they come back, he can maybe make a playoff run. I still think he's just such a good user that he can do it. Um, but this season may or may not get away from him. The Browns, however, are very much still in the mix, and so much depends on that game with the Chiefs this week um, at three and three, which is not. Some, I think that's ahead of schedule, right? Like we, I did expect the Browns to be a good team by season five, but season three is maybe a little bit early. So by season five. I could see this being a really tough division. And even though you're probably still going to be the strongest user, all it takes is a few bounces in the wrong direction when, it, when a game is yep. close. And what I've seen from the Browns, I wanted to, I, I was earlier talking about the Browns in the chat box. Um, you know, r- raise my eyebrows a little bit because my first, my first game that I watched of him, uh, he played Ryan and Ryan Rain, the, the Panthers, and both. Both of them just played an incredibly sloppy game. Yeah, I kind of a lot of, birds, lot of a lot of bad throws. Yeah, um, just kind of wrote it off. And uh, then I watched. I don't know who he played the most recent game, but I watched that, uh, and he he looked way more comfortable with the sliders. I know that coming in as a new user with these sliders can be difficult. Um, what's going to be interesting this year? Obviously, the Bengals are hurt. Uh, and I did that. I, uh, <laughs> on my comeback win against Matt Rack, I, I hurt Gio Bernard and A.J. Green. I think that's the only thing that's going to keep him out of being into that next tier. Um, but what's interesting is can the Browns sneak in if those AFC West teams, you know, do dismantle each other on their way to the, or on, on their way to the playoffs um, and the AFC South? I mean, I, I think it's just going to be you and Jordan. Um, it, there's a lot of people that can get in, or excuse me, Arlen. Um, there's a lot of people that can get in, but the Browns, I think, right now in my division, have the best chance from the North in terms of wild card. Uh, what's going to be interesting? Browns and Bengals play. I believe it's Week 14 and Week 16 when AJ Green and Giovanni Bernard are back. And I mean, I, I again, not to toot my own horn, but for the playoffs. Or at the very least, right. it could be smoother and, than the Browns. Yeah, I mean, and and Matt Rack, his record, I mean, he's just been so unlucky against me. The first game that we played together, if nobody watched that game, it's actually worth going back and, and checking out the highlights. I, I, I mean, that game. he was destroying me. Um, I was almost ready to concede the game, like at the end of the third quarter. Luckily, I was able to score 29 unanswered points hurt Giovanni Bernard and A.J. Green and sneak out of there with a win. Yes. Um, had he won that game, though, and didn't get uh, mad in, so to speak, in our last game, all of a sudden I could have two losses 
and the division could be wide open. So I think it's really going to come down to can the Bengals perform against a user like Matt Rack um, and show that they're here to stay and take the Browns to the next level. I'm with you. All right, so prediction, though, for the season, uh, still pretty cut and dry. I'm taking the Steelers, um, and I don't think it's going to be with – I think it'll be more than two games. Um, That's fair. I won't ask you to predict yourself, and I won't predict myself. But moving on to the AFC yeah, South. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask, I wanted to ask yeah. you that. So, I mean, you're in charge right now. I'll, I'll take over here since uh, you're the one that seems to be leading the way, last undefeated team in the AFC. Um, it looks like, you know, having a two-game lead, that big game against Arlen um, looks like you're set to win the division, but a lot can change in that division because the Colts have woken up. Um, the Colts are five and two. The Colts are second yeah. in the division. They're like, certainly not the uh, user that a lot of people expected based on the first user season that we saw. Um, so I will jump into the Colts that. real quick, real quick, and say that. For anyone that played the Colts in season one, if you caught him on a good game, like both the game, he has passing talent and he had the highest yards per carry of anyone in the league, but he just didn't run the ball and you could just tee off on the pass game. It was one of those things where he's going to move up and down the field as well as anyone in the league, but he's going to keep passing and passing and passing. Eventually it would be a strip sack or an interception. You know what I mean? Like there's, I don't care how good you're in their passing game. If someone doesn't respect your run game, you're going to lose. And that's, so I saw the talent, and he, now, unlike most teams that just keep butting their head against the wall, he is now committing to the run, even when it's not working. That's the way to tell. It's like he'll have these games where he's running 23, 24 times for two and a half yards of carry. He's sticking with right. it, keeping people honest, limiting his turnovers, and he's doing it, by the way, with Alex Smith. Luck went down again. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I think he's, I mean, obviously he has a shot. He's 5-2, and two, but I, I think I would not be surprised if AFC South sent three teams and before i turn it over to you and talk about me and arlen know that spartan state is actually coming back later this season like in about three to four game weeks which yes he's out of the playoffs like there's no question there because he's gonna have to be on ap another three weeks or so he'll be like one and eight one and nine spartan was a playoff team last year like you're telling me he yep. can't start ruining seasons in the last like five or six weeks you be on a mission yeah and we ought to look up his schedule too because i mean that's gonna have a lot of a lot of playoff implications. I mean, if, if someone runs into the Titans, you know, week 10 and on, uh, they've got their work cut out for him because I'm sure he didn't want his team to have one win. No, he, so, he was thinking he'd be on AP for three weeks, come back and win out. Like, cause you know him, he's a confident guy. He always thinks he's going to win out. Um, it's not yeah. even disrespect from him. He just, he knows he's a good player. Um, right. So I, I, I have to check the schedule. I've already played his CPU twice, so I lucked out. I'll be the first to admit that was pure luck. Um, so I don't have to face him again. I have to face the Colts one more time, and I have to face the Jags one more time. Okay. Well, that's, that's a big one right there. Uh, Jags, Texans, it's been probably the most interesting rivalry, you know, between you and Jordan. Or, uh, excuse me, Arlen, keep mixing those two up. Um, you know, Losing two in the user season to him um, after going in, you know, to the playoffs and then uh, being able to pull that win out. And now this, you know, winning that game by, what was it, three this year? Oh, yeah, it was uh, a very, very close game. He was, I was up and then he was up and then it was like a comeback. I mean, it was back right. and forth. Just a heavyweight battle. Um, that last, when, when what week do you guys end up playing? Uh, you know? It's it's actually I think in the middle of the season. It's not actually late season. The okay. catch is though, like he needs me to lose in a few other games or, or or a couple other games, which easily could happen. No, actually, we, we play week sixteen, and I play the Colts week seventeen. So actually, that could be spoiling one of their two seasons by me or or vice versa. The 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 problem that the hole Ireland's in is the hole that I dug myself into in season one, which is I'm already four zero in the division and have beaten him once, which means. Even if he beats me in the second game, um, and then I, even if help. I were to also then lose to the Colts, we'd be like tied in with division record. So he just needs a lot of things to fall in his favor. But I do play a couple of other good teams outside of division, so it may not come right. down to those times still. But certainly it's well, it's yeah. I'm looking at it right now. I mean, this is this is what's interesting to me. Um, we've got George, or excuse me, third time, Arlen, his last three games of the season 
our division game. And it's all against you, the Colts, and the Titans and to wrap it up. Week 17. That, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're looking at the playoff race, I mean, if, if Arlen's going to make a push to win the division, um, you know, we're, we're looking at a possibility of him needing to win out or have some serious help from out of division opponents. Uh, I think he needs a game or two in his favor. I, I don't, with my schedule, it's not as brutal as it was in season one, but I see a couple losses on there. Not anyone in particular, just there's too many good good teams. Like the the gap yeah, isn't wide enough. It's good. a couple of games, a couple balls to right. roll against. I mean, teams. even even getting, uh, I think you play the the Bengals week thirteen. I mean, the Giants. I mean, they just lost by now. four to the Falcons. New user there. Um, Jets are looking strong. Yeah. We talked about. It. Honestly, people don't notice because it went to a sim to win because of the fourth quarter. But I disconnected against the Patriots when it was like a neck and neck game in season one at halftime. Um, we just had to replay it because it was within like three points. But like, you know, the Patriots. I could not stop his run game, and that was before he had his rookie. So like, there's 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 some teams on there. The Bills, the Raiders, still like it. I don't have it. I don't have like a really an easy game on there per se. So right. Uh, so, let's, let's I mean, the handful, of, the handful of teams, just to wrap it up, uh, we're looking at really Jaguars, Colts, Raiders, Chiefs, maybe the Browns on the outside for those wild card spots. That's, a, that's the yeah, five teams. still very much in it. It's just, it's, I, don't, we, I don't think he's shown quite as much as Sage with the Raiders. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe not, you know, he, I put him, kind of put him similar to the Colts where he showed Flash in season mm-hmm. one. So I don't think he's got a ton of believers yet that he's going to be able to get the 10 or 11 wins that it's going to take to make the playoffs, but he's very much in position right now. He's four and three. I mean, this is the, this is the part of the season where you either put up or shut up. So That's true. we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. All right. So moving on to the NFC uh, first division, uh, this was, this might be, this might be the juggernaut that I inadvertently created when Raider left the Cowboys. Uh, Saren is a big Cowboys fan, um, so he's been a longtime member since, also since kind of Ha for a little while. Um, good mm-hmm. guy. I was like, you know, it makes sense to offer him the Cowboys. Um, yeah, may have created a monster because he already was the number one running player in the game with the Saints, who do have a solid line and a good running back, but nothing like the Cowboys. Um, and, and nothing he, like Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> nothing like Ezekiel Elliott, nothing like that line. Like, I mean... He's a monstrosity now. Like I could, and he's a much better passer than Raider ever was. So like, I could see, and I'm not like no joke. Saren's been on the rise for a while. He like started off strong season one, then he lost a lot of games, and then he finished strong and squeaked in the playoffs. But he just wasn't quite on the level of a, of a couple of the top NFC teams. I could see him winning the NFC this year, like all going to the Super Bowl. Yes, I could see that too. Uh, I just like Sage. I got to play Saran. Uh, two weeks ago, and it was a very similar situation to the Bengals game. I was about ready to pack it in in the fourth quarter and was able to come back. Um, was he's one of those teams that can, he, when he airs it out, um, it can be hard to stop him. And the way that he airs it out, coupled with an offensive line and a running game like that in Dallas, uh, they're already five and two. I don't think it's any question who's winning the AFC or the NFC East. No, it's not. Uh, at all. We're, we're gonna. We're, yeah. I will. I will bring up one other thing, uh, or two other things. So the Eagles aren't quite there yet. Their teams improved. The rosters improved. As much uh, shit as we give Finley, he actually has drafted well. People gave him shit about that running back, but like the physicals were off the charts. I always thought it was a little overstated. People were focusing on OVR. It was, uh, so he he's right. got a monster running game there. When he when he hits, he's a little bit reliant on the boomer bust big play. But he's not making the playoffs this year. The skins, it look the NFC is so tight right now. Like the the team that just there are 15 teams right now that are legitimately in contention for the playoffs because the number five seed I guess is four and three, four and two. So all these two and four teams are only two games back, and you have some good users like. Washington Redskins, Kenny Bard has proven he can win games. Um, the mm-hmm. New York Giants with a new user lost by four on a last two minute, uh, you know, into the fourth quarter drive to greatness who won the NFC in season one. So like he, even at two and five, like he's not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I, I will say that while 
while we, I'm definitely not predicting them, Saren's going to run away with that division. Both of those teams are still in the, in the playoff race, in my eyes, the Skins and the Giants. Right. I mean, the wild card in the NFC is a little bit more wide open than it Super is in, in my humble opinion. Uh, Isn't that like the like only you said, favorite I mean, you could say right now for sure is the Falcons. And that if you, that's if you don't think they're going to win the division, which they're probably still the favorite. I don't want to talk about the NFC South. Yeah, we'll, we'll table that for a moment. Actually, no, let's go to the NFC South. We're, we're, we're both in agreement. Dallas Cowboys, NFC East. NFC South. Right. Atlanta's a half it's game back. It's interesting. Yeah. Do, and we have a new user that we haven't seen before or I haven't seen. So I've now watched his game. He's good. Um, he, who did he lose to? It was, it was, he barely lost to like a really good team. Um, I want to I want to say he just played, um, okay. I'm looking, I can look at that real quick, but yeah. it, okay. It was, didn't it go to a it sim? that yeah. score doesn't really tell the whole story. Um, it was 30 to 13 was the final, but it really was like about a one score game for a good chunk of the game. Like. He's good. He definitely, obviously, has a little bit of adjustment. Not as much as some others because he, he runs um, his own league and they use a version of our sliders. Um, they've tweaked some things to make it better for their league. But, like, so he's not coming in, like, brand new like some other guys, like, with no concept yeah. of, you know, how fast the pass rush hits, et cetera. That said, for all, as good as Saren is, the Cowboys have one of the worst pass rushes in the league. So there still could be a wake-up game in store for Rich and the Saints. Right. And I, I think they still have greatness on the schedule or the Falcons on the schedule. So for uh, the Saints, I mean, it, to me, it's between right now, it's the Saints and the Falcons. You know, it, it's going to come down to if Moz and Ryan can sneak one of these wins out. Because, you know, in the AFC or in the NFC South, I, I think they like to play spoiler to one another. Uh, Moz seems to have the Falcons number somehow, even though the Falcons seem to be winning the division consistently. It's one of those anomalies where the Bucks can come in and beat the Falcons at any given Sunday. So those little games are going to be important, but most importantly is the Saints Falcons next matchup. That's what I'm going to be waiting for. My pick is going to be whoever wins that next matchup. If the Saints can come in and prove themselves against the Falcons, I'm going to roll with the Saints. Um, I haven't, I haven't played him. I agree with you. I, I, I don't know if you – yeah. But, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. I think that this isn't just me saying, you know, oh, so-and-so has a chance. I think if the Saints win that game, I think they're a quality team. They're going to win a lot of games. Um, from what I saw in their game against Saren, um, he definitely can pass the ball. He definitely um, can run the ball. So, um, honestly, and even though Saren ended up hitting 30, you know, it's not like he hung 40 on him or anything. I think he can play some defense as well. So I, I think whoever wins that game is taking the NFC South. Yeah, um, I mean, and, and moving on. you can't count the Falcons out. I mean, it's, I would also say whoever loses the game is probably the front runner for the five or six seed. So no question like about that. And in fact, out. I'm going to double back and say, we both took the easy way out. We have to make a prediction. Who's, who's winning that game? Who's winning, the, who's winning the division? I'm going to go with who I know. I'll say the Falcons win. I'll say greatness pulls it out and wins the division. And uh, Saints sneak in the wild card. Yeah, I'm the same thing. Greatness is, greatness is like weirdly underrated considering he won a Super Bowl and was arguably the best player in Madden 16 in the league or the most successful um, in terms of making two Super Bowls, winning one. Uh, he won the NFC season one. Um, and yet sometimes people still don't put him in that upper top tier, which is craziness. Um, he's he's yeah. one of the most balanced teams in the NFL, in, in, in the entire league. He's very difficult to game plan for because he doesn't rely on the run or the pass. He It's nothing balanced. flashy. You know what's coming at you. It's just hard to stop it. Yep. So. Um, all right. So AF, or actually, we're, we're going to save that one for the last. The NFC North. Um, Vikings jump out to a 5-0 and start before dropping a game to the new Seahawks head coach, um, who, by the way, looks really strong as well. Um, so that's nothing to, to really to blink at. Like that's, but that's a, that's a really strong start by the Vikings. You also have the Bears at 4-3 and three, um, ever mm-hmm. since he toned down that whole running back uh, passing to him way too much mm-hmm. thing, ironically. Or not, not ironically, he actually started to win games. 
he was putting up stupid numbers, um, losing games, and then he became more balanced, and now he's winning games. And then, as you said, obviously the Packers. And I don't know that I see the Lions making a playoff push, but you know they are capable of upsetting teams because they have a good defense and they have Matt Stafford, and he can throw the ball. Absolutely. This is the team, or this is the division in football and awful right now that, um, I mean, the Lions are – one division game away from coming back into second or third place. Same with the Packers and same with the Bears. I mean, if they, if any of these teams lose, uh, Bears, Packers, Lions, if any of those teams are losing, uh, it's devastating. And I mean, every every single game from here on out for them is is should be a playoff game because um, they're obviously. I, I don't think that they're going to catch the Vikings, the way that they started, the way that that team looks right now. So I, I will say that the Vikings are my pick in the north. But all three of those teams, uh, obviously the Packers and the Bears are the front runners for a, a wild card spot. But it wouldn't surprise me if, if Weapon X could figure it out midway through the season and, you know, make a make a late push. All right. So, yeah, I agree with everything you said about the NFC North. Um I think that, I mean, last in season one, it came down to literally the last two user games in terms of, you know, it was down to tiebreaker rules and who would be two between the Vikings and the Packers. This year, it looks like the Bears are going to be right in that mix. I think that he is every bit the user that they are. I, I don't see a clear-cut um, guy who's well ahead of the pack, but my pick is still going to be the Vikings. I think he's playing strong. Um, he lets his defense do work, and he doesn't – get real sloppy with the ball on offense. Yeah, and that, yeah. that Vikings team is definitely the strongest in terms of roster. Um, to me, it's not close. That's just from the beginning of the season. And I I don't know if I can see them falling off here, the way that they've played, the team that they've played. Like you said, that Seahawks team isn't anything to, to balk at. I mean, it's, it's a good user. Um, yeah, so I've got the Vikings. And I'm going to go with uh, the Bears as the surprise wild card team. I think they'll I think they'll pull one out and right. and get in that sixth spot. I mean they're they are in the the like the sixth seed right now, so that's that's definitely not not outside the the realm of possibility. So moving on to what was probably the most I don't even know if it was necessarily the closest division in, in season one because there was there was two teams so far ahead of everybody else, but it was kind of the most entertaining because you had that rivalry between the Seahawks and the Cardinals. And from every yep. indication, it looks like we are going to jump right back into it. In fact, as we're speaking, I'm look, like they are playing right now, or they just finished the game, and I'm pulling up to see who ended up winning. Looks like in a come-from-behind victory, uh, the Cards just eked out the Seahawks by three points, 31-28. to 28. Uh, Seahawks wow. were up by like seven or ten points until – uh, maybe not that much, but they were up until late in the fourth quarter. So I didn't really see what happened. Um, I'll probably go back and, and watch the last, like, two or three minutes. But uh, still, I mean, Seahawks, we're talking losing by three to the Cardinals, who have been the number one offense and the number one defense this year. Horton is just on an absolute uh, tear, kind of living up to his reputation he's had for a while. So it looks like that rivalry, despite Van leaving, is more alive than ever. And then to add to that, Definitely. you've got the 49ers and Z Carr, who, again, this, they still might be one season away. That's, it felt early when they jumped out to a, a 2 0 hot start. They've lost a few games since, a couple bad breaks. But I think that roster is still one more sim year away. But, um, but I, I see them still spoiling a couple of seasons because Z Carr is such a strong user on the defense. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me either. I think the Seahawks have, uh, you know, with Van kind of digging a hole for the new user. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. Um, Luke's stepfather is, is, yeah. Luke's stepfather. I think he has a little bit too much of a hole to realistically think of the division. Actually, I think it's uh, with Jordan being 8-0, and I don't see it happening at all. But Definitely not for the division. I thought there was a playoff. Yeah, yeah we just lost, so it's 2-5 and five now. So that's going to be rough. But I see him beating right. a lot of teams the rest of the way. And in the NFC, yeah. even then, it's so close. It, you never know. I think that if in the AFC, I'd say he's out of it. In the NFC, I, I don't know. Am I willing to make the bold it prediction that the Seahawks? It wouldn't be too I'm crazy for I'm us Seahawks to say. Seahawks make the sixth seed. Okay. That, yeah, it wouldn't be too crazy of us to say, you know, 
hypothetically him him winning out uh, the way he just played Jordan, uh, if he can win out, I think eleven and five gets you in. So oh, I, I, I think nine and seven gets you in in the NFC. You're, you're thinking in too much in the AFC terms. I think in the NFC nine and seven gets you in the six seed. Dead serious. Really? Like, I think I there'll mean, be a tie break. Tie break at nine and seven, and I think he finishes with a good nine wins, despite the hole he's, he's dug, or not not that he's the one digging it, but despite the hole that they started in. Um, I think he climbs into the six seed. That's that's reasonable. I'm looking at the stats now. I mean, uh, I can't see the 49ers doing it. Uh, Zekar is putting together a team over there, but he's got a lot of work to do after uh, what happened with Harbaugh leaving. It still feels like that's lingering. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, just to touch on the Rams, uh, the Rams kind of look like the Rams in real life right now. Uh, trying to figure yeah. things out. <laughs> they're they're getting scored on. You know, offense isn't. Uh, they're not producing, and and it's time to figure something out, you know, for for Penguin because I know Penguin's a great guy. I've seen him play flashes of greatness. He showed improvement. Seen. This is his first league ever, by the way. So like he he's only yeah. really played offline before, and it's a huge difference. I mean, he he came within six of Jordan, and last you know toward the end of last season. I mean, he's had he's definitely shown flashes. Um, right. He's just not there yet. But he, unlike some users that come in, lose, never improve, and get out, um, I, I do see he's the improvement. I know that he's he's stuck with it. He's you know we've communicated a number of times in the end. He's going to have to go on AP for a few games this year because he's having a baby, which is you know kind of a good excuse. Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> sir. Uh, but. I, my understanding is he is definitely not bowing out, and he's got you know still like a, a young lethal defense that is kind of in its prime now with Aaron Donald and, and whatnot. So um, he he can play good defense, and honestly, that's such a good start. If you just play mistake free on offense and play defense, you can stay in any game. Um, right. And then certain balls, uh, yeah, you're not going to win a Super Bowl that way, but like you can win games that way. And as you learn to play offense and take more risks. Yeah, and if if uh, Penguin, if you do listen to this, um, you know, from one user to another, this is your first league too. Um, you know, don't expect to come in and, and start beating Jordan, but take pride in the fact that you uh, have had close games with Jordan. Jordan is probably the best. You know, if he's not, he's top three consistently. Um, learn from learn from uh, you know. Jordan coming into Los Angeles and trying to beat up on you because that experience when Madden 18 rolls around, when, you know, the, the, all the cycles that we'll have doing this, um, when you, when you pick up the sticks in the next Madden, some of the things that you've picked up in this game will just be second nature. And all of a sudden you won't be looking at, Oh, and six, we might be talking about you uh, making a push against Jordan in the same division, you know, yeah, the so, league has gotten so much more competitive than it was in Madden 15 because so many of the group has kind of stuck together and grown that if you took our games from the beginning of Madden 15, I know you had played a lot of Madden before, but Greatness, Horton, myself, Arlen, like most of us had not really played any Madden online to speak of before Madden 15. And so, you know, we we learned quick, but at the same time, like it is another level now. Like we see guys from other leagues, like the good users from other leagues can still come in and compete, but uh, you know, there's plenty of quality users that come in and really struggle in our league. So um, yeah, that's I mean, not even a point of pride. I'm not even trying to home. say that. Like I, I, you know, I only play in one league, so I really don't care how competitive our league is or isn't. But it's just something I've noticed over the last like year and a half. I'm like, yeah, we're actually like really competitive, in the sense that it's really difficult for somebody to come in and just run the house. Like I don't think yeah. that's ever happened with a new user. Like the closest would be the Seahawks. Van, he had success. He went 14-2 and two season one. Really strong regular season. Good for him. Lost in the first round of the playoffs and then opens up 0-4 in the next season. You know what I mean? Like, even exactly. the users that come in and do well, it's not like they're coming in and just killing You're everyone. in, you're so, out. Dominating. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely come in and, and do well, but we don't really have anybody that can do that every year. That's not a knock on the new guys. That's We don't have experienced guys that can do that and win every year. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. So it's anyway. a, it's, it's tough. Um, I mean, anybody can beat you in this league. Well, I feel like there's another episode at some point uh, in the near future that we started to get into 
about um, just like like game awareness, like third downs, things mm -hmm. like that. I'll hit pause on us for today because we're kind of out of time, but uh, so if you're up for it, I definitely would be down to dive into that sort of thing. Just help some of the newer guys who yeah. maybe they have the raw talent and the ability to survey a field and find the open guy, but so much is, is knowing when to take the risk and when not to and that sort of thing. Exactly. And hearing it, I mean, hearing it and trying, you know, when it's articulated in the way that we, we say it, I mean, you let me know ahead of time and we can, we can figure something out. Sounds good, man. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Always enjoyable. And uh, see you. I guess we don't play this year, man. So potentially see you in the playoffs. I'll see you in the playoffs. <laughs> All right. Have a good All one, right, man. Have a good one. You too.